Ah, uh, the year of Guild Wars 2. Let me tell you this, my friends. 2024 is the year of Guild Wars 2. And th this studio update is exactly why. Let's go. What an opener right there. So, got a studio update for Guild Wars 2, Autumn and Winter 23, with a few little spoilers for what's happening in 2024 as well. Some of this we already knew. In fact, most of this is stuff that we already know. It's basically confirmations with a couple of dates, talking about uh, the next patch, the Strike CM, like Rift Convergences, all that kind of good stuff. But a few little spoilers in there and some surprises too. Like we've got GVG actually supported by Guild Wars 2. Very big surprise there as well. And of course, a little bit of information regarding some of the weapon updates and world restructuring as well. So let's get into it. Here we go. First up, it is, of course, the story. Not really a big surprise, but the next patch is going to be November 7th. There were a lot of things pointing towards this, like the Wizard's Vault uh, time was going to swap over at exactly this date. That's why a lot of people thought that. Uh, and of course, uh, Halloween is also ending there. That's another kind of big signal that there's going to be a pretty major update. They usually kind of lead a festival into the next update as well. Uh, as a little bit of a tangent here, I'm going to derail immediately. This actually does give us some pretty interesting insight. It means we can actually use the Wizard's Vault as a little bit of a um, predictor of when the next update's going to be. Because the Wizard's Vault special tab expires when the kind of next uh, almost like seasonal update is coming through. So kind of a little bit of interesting stuff there. We'll see if that continues to be the case, obviously, for the next updates. But yeah, it looks like we might be able to actually use that to kind of tell us when something's coming, which if you think about it, is actually pretty cool. This is uh, very unprecedented that we actually know how much is going to be happening and when. And I actually do find this to be quite interesting as well, because it's almost, it's almost too much communication now. Now... In a way, the game has become kind of boring because nothing is a surprise anymore. We know exactly what is going to be happening and when. Uh, and you'll see exactly what I mean as we kind of go through all of this stuff. But anyway, we've got a new story. It's through the veil. It's new story. We're going into Neos. We already knew that. The Realm of Dreams. Very exciting. Play through the story. I actually want to just uh, quickly uh, meme on a read net here a little bit. I find this very funny. The trailer... For this is literally a flashback. They didn't, I guess they didn't have the, the budget or the time to make an actual trailer showing off new features uh, for the patch. So they actually, just, they actually just showed a flashback. There might be a launch trailer maybe, to be fair. So maybe they'll be like a, they'll, they, they, they're doing that now, right? They, they drop a trailer on the day with stuff going on. So people can just like log in and play. So maybe that will happen. But I do find it a little bit funny that the, like the teaser is actually just a flashback of what happened in the main story. That's a very ANET thing. You get this piece of cool artwork there uh, at the end. A little bit of a refresher that have led to our situation at the start of Through the Veil. And they give a bit of an overview, a bit of a recap of exactly what's going on. So for a recap, what's actually happening on November 7th? Story, final map introduced, first strike mission CM, new masteries, new Wizards Vault stuff, uh, new armor set that's going to feed into the legendary armor, six new relics, and of course we have convergences with legendary enemies and rift hunting map rotations end up getting completed which actually funny enough they actually brought this up in the schedule apparently because they added some extra maps uh, in a previous patch so they're just gonna it's done now now the map rotation is actually finished pretty cool actually they they're ahead of schedule guys they're on time we love to see that so let's get into convergences then so what are these things this is dragon storm basically except it's rifts uh wow we're excited to take demon hunting to a whole new level Wow. Public or squad-based phrase into enemy territory. So you're going into the demon realm. You're going into the demon territory. Uh, and here we go. You open up a portal into the home of the Cryptus where you need to have your weapons that they're in your wits about you. There are no waypoints in the hostile territory you'll strike into. It'll take coordination between players to keep yourselves alive um, long enough to complete your objective and take out the legendary Cryptus lurking in each convergence. This is kind of interesting. Like, it, th this almost seems to be a slightly larger open world experience, almost, rather than um, 
a, a smaller area that you just fight a boss in. So it looks like it might even be like a meta event of sorts. Probably a generic event, like with different stages and not, you know, it won't be as complicated as a meta event. But it seems to be maybe a bit more like Battle for Lion's Arch almost, where you have to really spread out on the map rather than, you know, just having this very centralized area. I'm actually very curious to see how, how this is actually going to work and how this is going to play out. Um, no waypoints. You'll probably be able to respawn still. Okay, I think some people are interpreting this as like, you can't respawn. That would actually be pretty cool, I think. If, uh, if you know, but that's way too hardcore for Guild Wars 2. That's very unlikely to happen. Coordination between players. I'm not gonna lie. Look, spoiler alert. This isn't gonna be hard. Uh, this is basically gonna be farm content like Dragonstorm, but it will hopefully be a little bit more of a step up from Rifts. Rifts, definitely one of the biggest disappointments for me in the expansion because they are just totally brain dead. Um, so hopefully this will be a little bit more interesting, uh, with some cool bosses in there, but yeah, gonna be some farm content. So you got the public version just like Dragonstorm, uh, and you can open a convergence using a Cryptus motivation. Now, this is actually quite interesting, because you might think, wait, why do you have to pay to go open the convergence? And I think there's a couple of reasons here. Um, it's entirely possible you might be able to farm this. I'm not sure, actually, but this almost seems to imply that you can basically do this an unlimited amount of times, very similar to normal rifts. There is a weekly reward. You get uh, an unstable cryptus motivation, which you can then use to open uh, a convergence. Uh, but the reason they wouldn't want you doing this over and over again is because you're going to get loads of rift currency from this, right? So if you can just do it for free, that means you're basically skipping the normal fee of having to use a motivation in open world rifts. They want to have that cost attached there as well. And obviously, you're either, you are either have to do it time-gated and obviously way slower, um, or you have to do a private squad. Of course, you could do the public and then do a private afterwards with the unstable motivation that you get. And what's quite interesting here, of course, is that you can actually um, almost like go infinite if you had a guild, uh, because of course what you could do is, you could play with your guild, your squad, right? Which is probably going to be a 10 player squad, um, maybe, or maybe a 50 player squad. We don't know exactly how many people you're going to have in there. Uh, and you could basically go infinite, because of course if you, if you play with a group, and then everyone kind of says, hey, I'll do my motivation next, I'll do my motivation next, I'll do my motivation next, right? You'll just be able to go and go and go and go and go and go and go, or at least do it daily. Uh, it's entirely possible this is going to be daily locked. Uh, we don't know yet, obviously. Uh, there's a weekly bonus Cryptus motivation as well, but there's actually some pretty interesting potential for some uh, kind of guild collaboration and more social play here, which I think is actually pretty interesting uh, with these convergences. And yeah, the landscape does look pretty cool, actually. Very Domain of Anguishy. They're definitely leaning into the Nightfall elements. Looks pretty cool, actually. We see, I think there's another image here. I, I actually really like this one. This was really cool. Uh, very misty, very ominous, very spooky. These kind of like washed out colors uh, and kind of like the demonic stuff just popping up everywhere. Very interesting to see how uh, that's all going to look and how some of those bosses are going to be as well. So yes, convergences. Maybe this is the way that you're going to farm your rifts for legendary armor. I mean, I haven't done any rifts and I refuse to because, uh, I mean, I, I will just turn my brain to liquid and I kind of need that thing in there mostly. So that's it's just no good. But maybe convergences will be uh, high energy content. Wizard's Vault. New rewards in the Wizard's Vault, guys. Basically, the old stuff is getting moved to the Legacy tab. It's getting a bit more expensive uh, in the Legacy tab because it's old. Pay a premium on that. Buy it now. Buy it now. Uh, but you can still get it. So don't worry about missing out on all that kind of stuff. You don't even lose your acclaim. Your acclaim's going to carry over to the next season of Guild Wars 2, as it were. Or whatever. And new rewards. New armor pieces. Infusion. Weapon recolor and more. Wow, very exciting. I, I, what I really want them to do, I want them to cut the crap. I want them to get the garbage out of this. Um, specifically the noob traps. If they don't remove the noob traps, I'm going to roast Arena. now. I do not want to see Obsidian Shard. I do not want to see a goddamn... Uh, wait, what's, what's the other really? Oh yeah, the tier 5 material costing an insane amount for no reason. Uh, Vision Crystal is very dubious to be honest, right? I, I don't want to see the garbage. Get it out. I don't like noob traps. They upset me. Um, stop baiting players into buying useless stuff. Ha! There we go. Boom. Oh yeah, the essence of luck. That could also probably get rotated out. Get rid of it. Oh yeah, the essence of luck and the essence of gold. Big troll stuff in there. Not a big fan. Okay. But yeah, I mean, new rewards. New infusion school, actually. I'm an infusion enjoyer. Because it's going to be very easy to get, it probably won't be very flashy. It'll be a more subtle effect, I think. Because... A readnet don't want everyone to have like a super flashy infusion running around and everyone will be able to get this and a readnet need to think about that. Literally every player is going to be able to have this. 
So it'll be a more subtle effect, I think. Which is good, by the way. I think that Guild Wars 2 definitely does lack in subtlety. Um, you know, I've been playing other MMOs recently, and it's very noticeable, like, how glary this game can be with all of the really explosive particle effects and just crap that people stick onto their characters. It's actually very nice, uh, to be honest. So, hey, maybe we're going to have a nice, relaxing uh, set of skins and infusions coming up with this next season. But yeah, pretty cool stuff there as well. Here's some fun stuff as well. Check this out. I love to see this. I think a lot of people have been waiting on this, and here we go. Skills and balance. Here we go. So new relics, of course, are coming with this. I hope they go hard on these. I definitely want to see them go pretty big on this and really make some wacky, crazy relic effects. I think most relics right now are a little bit boring, I think. So I think just do some crazy stuff and some pretty weird, really impactful effects uh, for this. Let's see what they do, which is nice. But of course, we also have balance updates. So that update is coming on the 28th of November. So basically the end of next month, we're getting this big skills and balance update, this majorly quarterly balance update. So this is going to be a big one. And we're getting a preview this Friday, October 27th. I've definitely missed these. It's always a pleasure to see CMC and Roy have some fun uh, going through the balance stuff. Definitely looking forward to this. Should be some pretty interesting stuff. Hoping to see some pretty big changes. Again, kind of looking at those support builds in particular, I think is really important. DPS balance is honestly pretty solid right now overall. It's mostly looking at some of the overperforming support builds, I want to say, and kind of shoring up some of the other options. They're really getting there, uh, and I expect to see some decent progress um, in kind of improving those, improving boon access, improving damage, improving utility, and so on, and improving playability. Pretty cool stuff. And here's another bit of a fun one as well. So on November 28th, as promised, we're also getting a new weapon um, beta, right? So new weapons are coming next year, probably in kind of February. It's the next patch, basically, after this one. Uh, there's going to be a brand new weapon for each profession. And I mean, like, a new weapon. Like, Necro's getting dual wield swords, for example. I think uh, Mez was getting rifle, all that kind of stuff. Ellie's getting pistol. Have fun. You guys got trolled. No longbow for you. Um, but yeah, brand new weapon uh, coming out. And we're going to be able to actually try it out and see kind of one of the first iterations of it that's kind of making it to the live game. Well, not the live game, but the, the beta version of the game. Uh, on November 20th. Really exciting. On the same day as the balance patch as well. So it's going to be a really uh, skill-filled day. Lots of new skills to try out. Lots of new abilities to try out there as well. Very, very cool, actually. And it's a pretty long beta as well. Um, it's nearly a week. Well, when I say nearly a week, you know, it's, it's a good amount of time. Uh, November 28th through to December the 3rd which is good. A lot of the times I've always felt these betas are a bit too short. They run them for like three days. Uh, so we're getting a little bit more meat this time, which I'm actually pretty happy about. Gives you some proper time to actually get in there and test the stuff out and then give some feedback, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of fun. It really, really will be. Pretty damn good, if you ask me. So yeah, stay tuned for the Twitch changes. And of course, get ready for the beta. And yeah, in early 2024, again. So the next update is early 2024. It looks like it's going to be probably like February uh, kind of thing is where it's going to be you know, mid end of February, I'd say, for the next update. And that's the big one, by the way. Um, the second update is actually arguably bigger than the expansion, in my opinion, because you get legendary armor, legendary relic, uh, a strike mission challenge mode, a final map gets extended, um, and yeah, and a new weapon for each thing. So that's actually, I would argue, more content uh, or you know, kind of like more longevity in content and more um, change to the game than the actual expansion itself. So pretty big one there. Uh, if you ask me in terms of those updates. And look what we've got here, my friends. Look what we've got here. Who would have seen this coming? World versus World. Check this one out. In late January 2024, we'll be expanding the ways you can use your guild hall to create unique gameplay experience with the guild hall arena update, including a selector to control which game mode rules your guild arena uses. This feature will give you the ability to set your personal game mode in the guild hall, enabling the skills and balancing for PvP or world versus world. In addition, we'll be introducing options to select teams outside of the confines of the guild arena, giving you access to the entire map so you can battle your friends. This is basically what the GVG community has wanted for ages. And yeah, great. Love it. That's fantastic stuff. I'm a big fan of that. We absolutely love to see that. Great change, in my opinion. This is really cool, too. I like that you can do it outside the guild arena. So this basically means that you can use decorations to create any kind of arena you want. You could have a completely flat area. You could have some hills. You could have, like, a jumping puzzle and kiting spots in your arena as well. Actually incredible. Love this. 
Uh, really, really good. The only problem here, the elephant in the room, the guild hall instancing system sucks. It is atrocious. It is extremely difficult to get everyone in the same instance. The guild, it's honestly, the system is flat out broken. It's not working as intended. Because what happens is, is that as more people join the guild hall, it starts making a new instance and tries to force everyone out of the old one into the new one. That would be fine, by the way, if that actually worked, but it doesn't. What happens is, is that people end up fragmented. Instances don't close properly. You end up in duplicated ones. You end up in an instance that closes instantly as soon as you get in there. It is a total mess. It is unbelievably frustrating to use. I've um, had a lot of issues with it. I've done some GVG tournaments. I've done beetle racing tournaments, guild events. Super annoying to deal with. Uh, and I really hope they're able to fix it. We, maybe they have fixed it. It's actually entirely possible that they have fixed it. They don't. Um, I feel like they would mention it if they had. So maybe not. But who knows? Maybe they just didn't say. But if they fix that, it's actually a super cool system. Uh, I think the Guild Hall system is very underutilizing Guild Wars 2. Because it almost allows you to create content, right? It's like player-driven content, which I think is really, really awesome. Kind of brings me in mind of games like Roblox, right? Like um, you can have almost a bit of a sandbox environment. Very, very cool, actually. Um, uh, I almost wish you could have like a, this would be really cool for beetle racing tracks and guild arenas. You could like list your guild hall and people could basically clone it and have, and like visit your guild hall in their own instance of that. So anyone could race on anyone's beetle track. Anyone, you could have like a, you could almost have like a list of really popular and well-made GVG arenas that any guild could use to like battle against other guilds or like have in-houses, all that kind of stuff. That should be really cool. But yeah, this is great. Big fan of this. This is one of those things that you definitely don't expect uh, to see, and you honestly love to see it. Uh, this is what happens when you hire Roy, right? Like, Roy is clearly in control uh, of ArenaNet, and it's got the job done. And we got world restructuring. World restructuring beta in early 2024. Um, yeah, it, look, let, let's not muck about here. This is def it's pretty clearly not a huge priority for ArenaNet. We're getting there, I guess. Um, you know, the, I think it was supposed to be happening this year, but now it got delayed a little bit. The World of Sword team has shifted their priority to releasing a live version of the guild-based world restructuring system. Doing this allows us to get consistent live data and feedback from the community to inform our continued development and improvement. Since our last beta, we've just seen a bunch of issues, the guild section, queue failures, reset issues, and more. In the next beta, we'll be testing the new team build, the UI updates, and bug fixes. Assuming everything goes well, we will have to move forward with turning up the system on full time. We don't have the dates for the beta or initial release at this time. We'll let you know as soon as possible to allow you time to organize your guilds. So I actually want to be really, really clear about this um, because there's a lot of confusion here, partially because I feel like it is actually a little bit confusing, uh, but also because people don't read. What is world restructuring? World restructuring is where you pick a guild, right? And you can play with any guild you want. And then everyone assigned to that guild gets fed into a matchmaker and it builds a world, right, from everyone who signs up using a guild or just completely random people. And it creates that world for you. So this means you can play with your guild in World vs. World. I think a lot of people thought that that was alliances. No, that's world restructuring. All alliances are is the layer on top of that that allows you to join guilds to other guilds. World restructuring is by far the most impactful and important part of the updates they have for World vs. World. Again, alliances is kind of like the extra bit. And it was actually kind of... I, I understand why they've changed priority, by the way. The cap on an alliance was 500, which is the same as the guild cap. In a lot of ways, alliances were the well at least with the current implementation were kind of redundant the thing that would be nice with alliances of course um or well this they could obviously do this with world restructuring too to be fair um but was the competitive infrastructure so in other words like a rework to what winning means in world versus world so like guilds have a certain score but you could do that with world restructuring right like if a guild contributes a lot you could have you could there could be a leaderboard or something like that if your guild wins a lot you could put that on a leaderboard as well right you could have like win rates you could have kill death rates right like amount of points scored all that kind of stuff so you could do that with this too. But yeah, that, that could be the only potential downside of this is that you, maybe they won't be focusing on that competitive infrastructure, which I think is important. But to be clear, world restructuring is definitely the more impactful part of it. And certainly the bigger quality of life stuff, being able to play with your guild at any time, I think is a really good idea, as opposed to having the, you know, the kind of the server architecture system that we have right now. So yeah, world restructuring beta, it's coming. It's good. And yes, there you go. 
I have now clarified world restructuring. So nobody has any excuse on this channel to not understand it. There we go. Surely. Hopefully I explained it well enough, but that's the deal. Sign up with your guild, puts you in the matchmaker, makes a world, boom. Hopefully better matches, more exciting matches, more guild oriented. Very exciting stuff. We love to see it. And then basically, we're getting a little bit of a, of a preview with what's going on here. We get some new bonus, guys. Look at this. We've got Dungeon Rush. This is very brave considering how buggy dungeons are. Very funny. Let's see how that one goes. We might see some Reddit posts about some broken content. New Hero Jumpstart event. That's actually pretty cool. I wonder what that's going to be. Obviously, like a new player-focused event. And this really actually... Um, uh, the, Guild Wars 2 is a very new player-focused game. And I, I will admit this. There is almost like a little bit of sadness um, when I read that stuff like this. Because... I mean, it, it, it just means I'm not the target audience of this game, right? I, I think that new players are pretty much always the target demographic for Guild Wars 2. It's always like new players. I, I actually think that players like me, not really that important, unfortunately. Uh, which does make me a little bit sad because, you know, I, I like Guild Wars 2. But, yeah, uh, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. This is definitely, uh, and Soto was very new, new player focused. I'm expecting basically everything to be very new player focused from here on out, because that's basically the strategy that works really well for ArenaNet is like new players in, and then they just come back to the game like once in a while whenever there's new content, but it is what it is. Uh, that is the nature of it, but definitely interested to see what that is. Uh, I do like the events. I hope they keep this going, right? Like I do think that having little exciting events in the game uh, like new things, like kind of encouraging players to try out different content is really important. I hope they make the rewards a bit better though, because the rewards suck uh, on a lot of these events. So maybe they could buff that up a little bit, I guess. Uh, but hey, you know, you can't win them all, can you? And there we go. I've got a little bit of a preview. You know, you got Winners Day coming, you got all this stuff. A new balance update coming at the end of January. So not much of a gap between the two of these. They're very committed to getting these quarterly balance updates out, which is actually very exciting. Uh, so they're keeping going on that. So they'll be able to actually pretty quickly uh, get stuff fixed. Because again, I, I'd really encourage everyone to think about this. Like even if stuff isn't perfect or that maybe there's some missteps uh, in the next patch coming up in November, they'll have a chance to address that very, very quickly um, with the January update there as well. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of room for kind of pretty agile development when it comes to skills and balance, which I think is pretty good overall. Pretty damn good, if you ask me. So this is the overview here. I guess we can take a look at the overview. Story, map, convergences, relics, Wizard's Vault, new armor set, Cosmic Reservity Challenge Mode. That didn't really come up in this patch, but yes, there is a new Strike CM. I'm not gonna lie, not super optimistic about this one. I think Dagda is a pretty weak Strike mission overall. I mean, obviously I will play it on the day and we'll, you know, we'll see what happens and see what's changed about it for this Challenge Mode. But yeah, I, I think Seras actually really cool fight. Dagda though, uh, uh, the, uh, what a weird fight. Very weird fight, in my opinion. Um, we'll see what they come up with, though, of course. We shall see. Extra here, uh, extra life charity stream. Always, you know, always cool to see a little bit of charity action. We love to see that. We've got Halloween. Got various rushes, all that kind of stuff. Guild Hall update. Weapon beta. Skills and balance. Wow, look at all this content. Look at all these bullet points. That's how you know the game is alive, guys. They got loads of bullet points all over the place. You love to see it. Two live streams. You got the preview. Again, we got this balance preview, guys, coming up on this Friday, October 27th. And then, of course, we have the Extra Life 24 hour stream. So definitely check that out. It's going to be the Guild Wars 2 channel. They're doing some charity gaming there, guys. Charity gaming over on the Guild Wars 2 channel. It's always good. And actually, it's definitely worth a watch, guys, even if you even if you hate charity and you you don't you don't like anything cool like that. You just despise it. They often uh, give a little bit of information for certain donation goals about the game. So there might actually be some little bit of a little bit of interesting things that we can pick up about the game uh, if we uh, investigate the stream. So there you go. In terms of um, this stuff here, uh, there's one thing that I'm very interested in is how this map is going to go. And I, I, I did I forgot to bring this up actually when we were talking about this at the start, but we'll actually finish on it. We'll finish on the map. I am very curious how much of the map is coming here and what's going to be on it. I'm kind of anticipating that the final meta event 
is going to be pretty epic. So when I say final meta event, I mean like the actual end of the expansion, which is going to be in two updates time. I wouldn't be surprised because there's no strike mission for the big bad, right? In this, this expansion, there's no strike. We're only getting Ceres. There's no extra one. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, the meta event be actually taking down essentially the final boss of the expansion. Now, of course, they can't add that now. So I'm very curious about how much map content is actually going to be dropping on release here. I do have a slight concern that there is not going to be that much in the open world in terms of um, kind of epic large-scale content. It might be... It might be a little bit of a very RP and exploration focus map, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I definitely like the meta events. It might be kind of like, um, uh, not Guile Adele's. Well, a little bit like that, but hopefully not quite like that. It might be a little bit more like uh, Bureau Marches, where you have two meta events. So one that is kind of focused on the early story and then one that's kind of like the story later on with Drakkar as we saw previously. So that could definitely be the case. But I really hope that the map has a lot of like good, repeatable, replayable stuff to do on it. Uh, I want to see some bosses. I want to see some big world bosses. All that kind of good stuff there. I do indeed. And I do not want to see any tunnels, right? If the tunnel is there, not good. Uh, but yeah, this is a very important set of updates because bear in mind, guys, this is the future of Guild Wars 2. Like, these updates are going to set the tone for the future of the game basically forever. Uh, so, we will see, right? There will be a lot of, you know, people are really waiting for this. There's going to be a lot of judgment going on here, in my opinion, uh, with what Arena are actually able to deliver here. So, let's hope it's good. Otherwise, uh, you know, the doom will flow like, wa like water, I guess. But yeah, that is it. That is the news. Prepare for the patch. Coming very, very soon indeed. And that's going to be it for 2023 in Guild Wars 2. Uh, basically, they'll be back after that. You know, we know that ArenaNet have a little bit of a winter break. We love to see that. You know, taking a little, uh, little rest. You know, going and doing some various Christmas-themed activities. All that kind of good stuff. But yes, that is it, guys. Guild Wars 2 in 2023 is over. Get ready for 2024, I guess. But anyway, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed me reading the studio update for you, okay? That's like a very Guild Wars 2 thing. You know, here in Guild Wars 2, we're very, very lazy, okay? We AFK farm, you know, we AFK in the labyrinth, pulsing boons, and we listen to other people reading the studio updates. And honestly, a good thing too. Otherwise, I mean, look, what am I going to upload to YouTube if I can't read the notes to you? But anyway, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this little analysis breakdown, my thoughts on this. Follow, subscribe, like video, leave comment, engage with the algorithm. Uh, watch my stream. You know, I stream on YouTube now. In fact, some of you probably watched this on YouTube. And now you watched it again on the video. That's right. We're streaming on YouTube. We're streaming on Twitch. We're everywhere. It's good stuff. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I'll see you next time, and of course, in-game. I'll be uh, kind of uh, responding and reacting. <laughs> oh, re I'm going to react, guys, uh, to the balance stream. And that will also be here on YouTube. So stay tuned for that, my friends. Enjoy. You can see what I think of all the new balance updates. It's going to be great. But hey, take it easy, gamers. I'm out of here. I'll see you next time. <laughs>